Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. Cardinal Burke gave an interview to the National Catholic Register that is really illustrative of the state of the Church today. We are told in our time that the highest value to be prized is unity and listening. It's a form of institutionalized indifference, indifference to sin, indifference to the truth, and indifference to the well-being of others wrapped up in a concern for making others feel welcome. It's very secular thinking, really, and it's all a contradiction. And here we see in two seemingly different topics a contrast is shown. Cardinal Burke has a book coming out soon on the valid reception of the Eucharist, kind of a hot-button topic in the church these days. And in his book, he covers the widespread disregard for what the church has always said about validly receiving the Eucharist, which we will now compare with what Francis has said on that topic and how it has impacted the synod of sin that's going on now in Rome. So let's dive right into the story, and we get, the, get it from the National Catholic Register with this headline. Cardinal Burke publishes book on greater reverence for the Eucharist. Widespread reception of communion with insufficient worthiness concerns me greatly, says the Prefect Emeritus of the Apostolic Signatura. Just a reminder, the National Catholic Register is the print arm of EWTN. That's a fairly moderate news source. The article is an interview conducted by Edward Penton, who usually gives some fairly spicy news on Twitter regarding the Synod of Sin and a few other big church headlines. Here, he is interviewing Cardinal Burke in relation to a new book that the Cardinal is having published soon on, again, treating the Eucharist with the reverence and respect that you would think we would actually give it, given that we proclaim as Catholics that Jesus Christ is truly present in the Eucharist. All too many Catholics receive our Lord in the Eucharist in the most irreverent manner imaginable, all permitted by modernist Rome, and this has been the case for decades. This predates Francis by a long time, this problem. Cardinal Burke has been concerned with this since at least 2004 because he was the one who told then-Senator Kerry, a self-described Catholic, not to receive Holy Communion in his diocese because of his dedication to the Moloch ritual. The response he received from his own fellow American bishops was telling. From the article, quote, Because I had seen a number of Catholic politicians who presented themselves and wanted to present themselves as Catholics promote legislative programs contrary to the Church's teaching and to do this publicly. And yet they were approaching to receiving Holy Communion. This concerned me greatly. Senator Kerry, when he was running for president, was very open in his support of the Moloch ritual. And I simply informed him that if he came to the Archdiocese of St. Louis, where I was the bishop, he should not approach to receive communion. This caused some bit of a kerfuffle, as they say, but it was obvious I wasn't taking some kind of extreme position. And in fact, when he came to St. Louis on a Sunday, he spoke in a Baptist church. Some bishops were concerned about what I had done, and some of them said, well, you can't do these things. So simply, it was clear to me that this is what the church had always practiced. Beginning with St. Paul, the 11th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthians. So I said to myself, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to study the whole canonical tradition, and obviously with attention, too, to the example of the saints and the teachings in Scripture. End quote. Cardinal Burke is then asked about the widespread belief people have today that it's okay to receive even when you have unconfessed mortal sins. This practice is a direct contradiction of what the Church says. Based on St. Paul's warnings about invalidly receiving the Eucharist that Cardinal Burke referenced there, but it's true. Most people are aware that the lines for confession at most parishes are relatively short, and confession times are relatively few as a consequence, while the line for the Eucharist every single Sunday is very, very long. While we can't point the figure at any one person in line for receiving communion, we can deduce that most Catholics are rarely, if ever, going to confession. And that's a very real problem in the Church today, because it means that, to borrow a phrase from St. Paul, it means that most Catholics are eating and drinking their own condemnation. Kind of a serious thing. Cardinal Burke hints at this in his response to the question about this. Quote, Yes, people have developed, and I saw this as a young priest, the idea that, well, if you're at Mass, you go to communion, even when sometimes people were in serious sin. And he would, when you would teach that they were in a state of grave serious sin, 
they were surprised. I think there has been a genuine loss of respect for the Blessed Sacrament, because it's not understood that this is the body of Christ. For instance, if a person is in the state of mortal sin, say they've committed adultery, that's not a public obstinate sin, at least not at least normally it wouldn't be, but it is a mortal sin. So Canon 915, those obstinately persevering and manifest grave sin are not to be admitted to Holy Communion, doesn't apply to them directly. But Canon 916 does. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive Holy Communion without having been to confession. They should realize that this is a grievous sin and not receive communion until they've confessed it and been absolved. And of course, that includes a firm purpose of amendment. End quote. So, Burke's new book is interesting on this because over all of this is a repeated statement Francis has made over the past few years that he has never denied anyone the Eucharist and that the church shouldn't deny anyone the Eucharist either. This stems, of course, from Archbishop Cordelione banning a rather high-profile Catholic politician, who I usually refer to as Lady Moloch, from receiving the Eucharist because she is a powerful advocate for the Moloch ritual, hence her nickname, and has publicly denied the teaching of the Church on this issue. Francis responded by saying this, headline from the National Catholic Reporter. Pope Francis says he has never denied communion, warns against politicizing Eucharist. The story broke a couple of years ago and was published by the National Catholic Reporter, which is a fringe modernist outlet that pushes Francis to be even more radical than he already publicly is. It's not the same outlet that publishing Cardinal Burke's book on the Eucharist. To be clear, these are two different news outlets. But note how different the positions of Francis and Cardinal Burke are here. Quote, Pope Francis on September 15th said the question of whether Moloch worshipping Catholic politicians should receive communion is pastoral and warned against bishops and priests who wade into politics. What should a shepherd do? Be a shepherd and not going around condemning or not condemning, the Pope said. They must be a shepherd with God's style, and God's style is closeness, compassion, and tenderness. Francis said he did not want to specifically address the particular situation in the United States, but added that, quote, if we look at the history of the church, we will see that every time the bishops did not act as shepherds, it was a quote-unquote problem. Francis was asked whether he had ever denied the Eucharist to someone who presented themselves for communion, and he said, never. No, I have never denied the Eucharist to anyone. To anyone, he said. I don't know if someone came to me under these conditions, but I have never refused them the Eucharist since the time I was a priest. He went on to share a humorous anecdote of celebrating Mass on one occasion at a nursing home. Afterwards, an elderly woman thanked him for communion, adding that she was one of our so-called elder brothers in the faith. Those who are not in the community cannot take communion like this Hebrew lady, he said, but the Lord wanted to reward her, and I did not know it. The reception of communion, said Francis, is, quote, linked to the community. Well, there may be those that are temporarily outside of the church community. He said they are, quote, sons of God, and they need our closeness, our pastoral closeness. A shepherd can decide it with the style of God, he added. If you are tender as a person, this is just a theory, but being pastors, the pastors know how to act in every moment. End quote. It's a lot of word salad there, honestly, but not only has he never denied anyone communion, he doesn't regret giving the Eucharist to someone who isn't even a Christian, who is a, matter, who is a member of a group who publicly denies his divinity. Presumably, she denies the divinity of Christ as Messiah, and as such holds rather troubling views about him that are typical of our so-called elder brethren in the faith. Just go look it up. Francis, and apparently doesn't regret giving her the Eucharist. Now, I read Pope in history until recent times that it was a great sacrilege to let anyone, not in a state of grace or who wasn't even a member of the church, to receive the Eucharist. Now, apparently, it's not a big deal. It's not a Catholic view of the Eucharist, to be clear, but this debate is happening now in the Synod of Sin. The provisions in Amoris Laetitia for communion for the civilly remarried are being deliberated now at the Synod of Sin. The Synod is deliberating this under the guise of unity. That communion, here, 
possibly meaning fraternity and brotherhood and other stone-cutter language that permeates the synod, that all of this will help heal a fractured world. This unity will absolutely require giving the Eucharist to those who would not traditionally have been able to receive the Eucharist. Now, the story shows this perfectly and was published about a month ago on the USCCB's news site with this headline. So brace for, for this one. Headline, Synod call to communion can help a fractured world, theologian says. How can we be more fully assigned an instrument of union with God and of the unity of all humanity? Was the question members of the Assembly of the Synod of Bishops began discussing October 9th with help from two theologians. Note the humanitarian focus on the Synod. And think about that in the very personal relationship receiving our Lord in the Eucharist represents. There can be no greater form of intimacy in this life than receiving the Eucharist validly. It is truly the most individual moment in our lives if we are properly prepared to receive the Lord. From the article, quote, The Catholic Church is called to be an instrument of communion with God and unity among all people, but requires grace and learning to bear with reality, gently, generously, lovingly, and courageously for the peace and salvation of the whole world, a theologian told the Assembly of the Sin of Bishops. Communion is the beauty of diversity and unity. In a modern world that tends towards both homogenizing and fracture, fracturing, communion is a language of beauty, a harmony of unity and plurality, said Anna Rollins, a professor of Catholic social thought and practice at Durham University in England. As synod participants began work on the second section or module of the Assembly's working document, October 9th, their discussions about promoting communion with God and with others were preceded by reflections offered by Rollins and by Dominican Father Timothy Radcliffe, a theologian and former master of the Dominican Order. Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerich, Relator General of the Synod, introduced the module by telling participants that a key question from the Synod's preparatory process, which included listening sessions on the parish, diocesan, national, and continental levels, was, quote, how can we become more fully a sign and instrument of union with God and of the unity of all humanity? God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is the, quote, basis of all communions, he said. And, quote, this God, who is love, loves the whole of creation, every single creature, and every human being in a special way. All are invited to be part of the church, the Cardinal said. In deep communion with his Father, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus extended this communion to all sinners. Are we ready to do the same? Are we ready to do this with groups which might irritate us because their way of being might seem to threaten our identity? End quote. What a bunch of emotional nonsense. But unity is the primary value for the modernists. But when you're in a state of grave sin, you're not even in union with the church anymore. And if you're not a member of the church, you're not in union with her either. Those are timeless teachings of the faith, yet when you carry unconfessed mortal sins, you are cut off from the depository of divine grace. This is something that's not even controversial. It's something to be taken seriously, though. The words of Burke here illustrate perfectly this entirely different worldview of Francis and the modernists that is separate from the Catholic worldview. Unity, for its own sake, is not something to be prized. That's what happens when you compare Cardinal Burke's words to, to Francis's. Truth and grace are, and it's only with the truth of the gospel and the grace of Christ that we can approach the altar worthily. Without that, we're playing with spiritual fire. So what do you think of this? Cardinal Burke's book sound like it's interesting? Do you think it'll just come and go and have very little impact? You wonder why the synod of sin is not actually deliberating at all on valid reception of the Eucharist? Let me know what you think of all this in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.